Hello everyone. Hola. Bonjour. And. Good day. <laughs> Good day, mate. <laughs> that one is Australian. Hello everyone. Yeah, so um, today I want to do. Uh, I'm going to do a editing video, and an editing uh, Photoshop editing video. This is so I want to show you uh, a walk. Uh, walk you through how I edited um, this shot here. Which, if you follow me on Instagram, you see I've started doing like these tutorial walkthroughs on how to uh, how to edit for or how I edit photos. I'm not telling you how to do it, but but just showing you this is how I what I do, the techniques that I use uh, uh, to get the photos that I do or to get my photos to look how they do. So yeah, and I said on uh, to the, on the in the description of that one that I would once I've got a computer that was actually powerful enough or worked well enough. To have a screen record whilst I edited, I would start doing these videos. So that is what I'm going to start doing today, right now, right this very second. So, yeah. So basically, I want to show you how I I took uh, this photo, the raw here, and I converted it into this. Ready? So I'll go like that. Ooh, <laughs> magical. Yeah. So I'll walk you through the uh, uh, the steps I took to do that so yeah let me take you in the photoshop and i'll show you what's what and what i do so yeah right so this is well it's not quite the raw that's the original ish photo and then as i say i convert it into that so let me open up that file that raw which is this one here open with photoshop 2024 so if you're not familiar with photoshop you'll see how things work from here um, and I just want to show you my workflow and how I bring things in so so this is what you greet with this is so it's uploaded the photo and this is camera raw so the only thing I'll do at this stage right now is I'll just change that to Adobe Vivid that is what I selected for this photo when I've done it so I should do that and bring that in so I open that now I'll open that on the layer. So the first thing I want to do is, well actually I'll deal with the crop to start with. I want to match that crop. It's a four by five crop, a vertical one. And I think it was about there somewhere if I look. Oh, I don't do that to me. Yeah, about there. There's somewhere like that. So that's the first thing I'll do is I'll crop it in. So what I try and do now, I've learnt with Photoshop, is I work with what they call smart objects. So the first thing I'll... Well, sorry, I'll leave this raw and then I'll, I can drill J and I'll open a new layer. And then what I'll do is I'll convert that into a smart object. There we go, convert the smart object. The reason I do that is because... That way, then Photoshop works like Lightroom does. So Lightroom will, um, if you're familiar with them, Lightroom, Lightroom maintains your, the details of your edit, if that makes sense. So it doesn't, uh, I'm trying to remember the terms for the two of them now, which I can't remember. But it doesn't, um, uh, so like on Photoshop, sorry, you, uh, if you don't create a smart object, if you work as a rasterized layer or rasterized layer or whatever that word is, you lose the information. Does that make sense? So like I'll do a camera raw adjustment filter on this now. And if I do that as a rasterized layer and accept it, I then I wouldn't be able to go back in and adjust those settings. I could open it as another camera raw, but well, I could put, uh, apply another camera raw filter on it but I won't know what the tweaks were that I done last time. So if you keep them as a smart object, which is what I just showed you how to do, it retains that information. So anytime, if you do a load of edits and you think, oh, actually I want to adjust that, you can go back to that original camera raw filter and adjust that accordingly, just so you know where you are. And when I'm doing like my um, tutorial walkthrough, like carousels that I do on Instagram and TikTok, 
that then allows me later on to be able to look back through what I've done, break that down and put that in his pictures to, to share on, on social media. So it's, it's a handy way to work. So that, yeah, that's how I do it. So on this first layer, I will do a filter and we're going to do a camera raw filter. And I'm actually going to cheat because I'm going to copy the settings that I showed you all on, on the thing so we can match this as best as possible. So where, let me load that up. Where are you? There you are. Oh yeah, exposure just bumped up. Contrast just bumped up. Right, so first thing is exposure. That just come up slightly to around 0.55. Yep, that'll loop 0.55. Bump up the contrast a little bit. Seven. I'll try and get through these parts quick so we can get to the, the more interesting parts of Photoshop. Because I use Photoshop pretty much all the time when I'm doing woodlands. If I'm doing trees or intimate trees like this, woodlands, I tend to always use Photoshop because I don't always get the conditions I want when I go out. Uh, I'm always after. If you follow me on Instagram, you'll see me always bemoaning it because... I always want mist or something like that because I just it just adds that extra um, element, that extra depth, that extra interest to an image. So, and this is what I'm going to show you how to do now is to create the conditions that you you might have wanted and you couldn't get. So you can just sort of create that feel that that condition um, just to make your image a bit more interesting because it's a nice picture. That I do like this picture, but. Um, just needed a bit extra. Like, I don't like the sky in the background. That is really annoying me. So these extra bits that I do uh, take that distraction away and add a bit more depth and a bit more interest. So, yeah, carrying on because I'm digressing. Yeah, so I pulled the highlights down quite a bit. Quite a bit down to, like, minus 72. Just, like I said, I don't like that sky and what that's doing to me. Shadows are bumped up, just to bring a bit of light back in. Whites are knocked up a tad. Um, I'll do another video where I'm just doing this straight off the cuff and I'm not copying that, but I, yeah, <laughs> I can't be bothered right now. I'm just gonna copy exactly what I've done before, but just give you a bit more in depth. And then the blacks are pulled down to around minus 23. So these are just your basic edits. This is like the light panel as it's called in Camera Raw. And if I click on the eye, you can see the difference already that that's making to the photo. It's bringing it to life. It's livening it up a bit. Just those, those simple adjustments in the light panel. That's what they're doing. I don't think, I didn't really do much color wise. I think the temperature of Pull down a tad just to, oh, that's the wrong thing. Control Z, undo that. Temperature, I pulled down a tad just because it was a cold day, so I wanted to uh, represent that feel. Somewhere there, I think it'll do. A tint, I don't think I really touched. I might have yeah, brought in a little bit of magenta. In fact, it's magenta. I think that's magenta. Put a tad of that in. Vibrance are bumped up a little bit. And I desaturated it slightly. So vibrance up to there somewhere. And then I desaturated it slightly. Yeah, just about minus four. I think really that was about it. I didn't do too much. I'm going to put that temperature back up. I don't know. Look at that. I'm going to go there somewhere. Yeah, I didn't really go too in depth on um, anything else really in camera raw. I think I pretty much was quite happy with that. It's because I already knew, I already knew what I was going to do. I knew I was going to apply the haze effect. I was going to go into the mist, so that was going to, and the other elements that I was going to do, or the other effects that I was going to do. So I, yeah, I didn't really ponce about too much anymore in there. So we're okay out of that. So this is what I mean about smart objects, if you just look down here quick. So what that's done, that's retained that camera raw information. So if I hadn't have done it as a smart object, it wouldn't have retained that information. Yes, I would have still got the 
camera raw effects on the image but I wouldn't have got the uh, I wouldn't have retained the information of what I'd done but because I've done it at the camera raw I can double click that and all that information is still there so it's handy um, twofold really for me to be able to adjust later on if I want to tweak some things again also for when I do my walkthroughs it's handy because I can go back and I know what I've actually done whereas if I hadn't have done that I wouldn't have a clue what I've actually done because I wouldn't remember all of that so <laughs> I'm yeah I'm not that smart um, right yeah so that's camera roll. right so the next thing we do now is on to oh no that wait one more in camera roll. sorry my bad apologies added a bit of a vignette didn't I my bad let me just zoom out of this now I prefer to that's gone the wrong way what I prefer to do instead of going down here to the effects panel and adding the vignette here I prefer oh, undo <coughs> I prefer to do that in the masks I think if you've watched the last editing video I've done, I might have talked through that, but I do it in mask, so I select a, um, I don't want to start at all. I've just uploaded this, by the way, to my, this is a new computer I've bought, and I've literally just uploaded Photoshop the other day, so it's going to ping up and try and give me tutorials all the time, so apologies for that, it's just I haven't been through everything really on here yet, so. Anyway, back to that, radial gradient. So I open up a radial gradient, I set a, a soft feather, let me just check this. There we go, soft feather. So yeah, quite a big radial gradient in that by the looks of it. So it covers like up there and out here somewhere like so. And what I do is invert. So when I say invert, if you've looked at the Instagram or the TikTok walkthrough, invert, you click this little button here and if you keep your eye on the red, I don't know why I'm pointing, you can't see my finger when I point. So I'll do it with the mouse instead, because that makes more sense. <laughs> Invert the mask. What that, so you look at the red, the red is where that mask's affecting. So if you invert the mask, it then pushes the red outside of that, so it reverses it, I think it might be the right word, or inverts it. So now that's what it's affecting. Now I think the feather I might bump back a little bit. Yeah, a bit bigger. The reason you do this vign vignette in, or I do the vignette in, is it just ever so subtly it helps to draw the viewer's eye to where you want it to go. So my main subject, obviously, is to stop pointing, <laughs> is the big tree. But mostly, it's like this is what I found really interesting, which is like the V and the moss. It's quite nice. So I just just use this subtly and I'm very subtly to help draw people's eyes in. So. Soft feather, drop exposure and shadow. So slightly drop the exposure, not too much. Literally very subtle, and then the shadows. And then that helps, as you can see, just draws draws the viewer's eye into the center of the image a bit more. So if I click that off and on, you can see it's very subtle you can see the effect it's having. So yeah, that was the last in camera raw. So we'll leave that where it is. The next thing is the haze effect. Now, there's two ways you can do this. You can either duplicate this layer or you can just export this on a new layer. So I'll do exporting it on a new layer. So you go to filter, neural filters. Let a note skip to see what I mean. I haven't been into all of it yet, so it wants to give me a tour of everything. I don't want to go on a tour of Dope, go away. Right, it's a depth blur. That's, ah, oh, no, apologies. I might, I'll speed this part up. As I say, I haven't been on it. New computer hasn't got all my, um, my uh, effects and presets and whatever on it, so. Let's download that. I'll speed that, I'll speed this part up. Right, so that's downloaded. So the first thing I do is I don't want the blur because I'll let this load up and I'll show you what it does. It's called the depth blur, so it adds, well, blur to the photo like that, you see? It'll add a blur and you can pick your 
focal range, you can pick your point that's in focus and all that sort of stuff, but that's handy for other things, it's not what I'm wanting to do here. What I want to do is use the haze effect that's inside of it, so I'll rack the blur down, rack, take it, rack, whack, take it down. I'll move the blur slider down to zero, so there's no blur applied now. And then haze was somewhere around, no, I don't want to see that. about 36 so yeah bring the haze up and you'll see what this does when this loads up it looks like mist and that is the idea that's what I'm after I want it to look like mist because I like mist you see adds a, a misty haze to your image woodland photography it suits really well because it just it gives you that depth it gives you that just that interest basically so I'm you might think it, some people might think it's cheating. That's I don't care. I enjoy doing it. I like taking the photos. I like editing them. And artistic license. I cooled that down a little bit so you can go to the temperature slider. Cool it down a touch. Stop doing that to me phone. Around minus yeah, about there minus five will do. I didn't do anything. Yeah, and that's it basically. Now, so this is the next part. You want to export that on a new layer. So that way it's not applying that haze effect to the layer that you opened up. It's giving you a new layer for it on. And there's a reason why I do that, which I will show you. So, okay. Let that export out. And now that's on a new layer. So it's handy to put it on a new layer because it means you can play about with your opacity, how strong that haze effect is. Uh, yada 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 but also what I like to do is as I state in the in the walkthrough neural copy setting about new light that's it and it well I've said a raise on there but I will use a layer mask instead for this is what I'll do so you come down the bottom here to layer mask which is the little camera looking thing and that adds a layer mask to the image so what the layer mask allows you to do is you can either paint an effect in or you can paint it out like erase it out that's just how layer masks work so if i was to control i so that effect is on there now the script sorry stop pointing use the fucking arrow jim that's on white at the minute that means the effect is applied if i control i that which means invert it means the effect is no longer applied so if i then use a brush I select my brush, which is this one here. And just as an example, I'm going to keep down on a strong opacity so you can see what's going on. Make sure your foreground is selected white. And if I start painting, you see how it paints that effect in. So that's when you've got an inverted mask that was black. Uh, well, you've in inverted the mask to the black color on the screen. And you can paint it in, or, which I'm going to do in a minute with a different effect, or you can have it the other way, so invert that back. Now it's on there. Now you can switch your colour to black, and you can paint it out, like so, and it paints it off. I mean, I don't want to go that extreme, because I want to just take it a bit away from the tree, a bit away from my subject. So what I'll do is I'll take the opacity down, somewhere around 30 percent i think on this one flow down a tad and then what i like to do is oh this is being annoying sorry is then paint that off the tree ever so slightly so you just keep working in And just paint it off. And if you look down the bottom here at the layer mask, you can see what was white is now turning black in places. And where it's turned black, that is where I'm now painting that out. Not painting in, I think I just said painting it out. So essentially I'm rubbing it out, but very gradually. And in that way, it just takes it away from the tree. And what that does for me is it just pulls that tree more to the foreground so the haze effect is taken off of it and it makes that tree more prominent 
which is then creating depth in your image, which is creating interest. It makes things look a bit more interesting. I think I took it off around there somewhere as well. It just paints it out. I'm going to go quite rough here. I'm not going to be uh, very in-depth because otherwise you guys will get sick of me and this will take too long. So something like that will do. It's a bit more for there. So you can see now what that's done is, is it's drawn, I to, to my eye, it's drawn that tree forward more. So now the tree is more prominent and the haze effect is beyond the tree and that's one created depth in your image and two it's given the misty look or a slight misty look that i always plead for and never get when i go out because i can never I, I never really get out on a sunday to go to, to, to go out the camera and so all week i will have or we will have nice frosty mornings nice sunny patchy cloudy days um all that sort of stuff uh, even like this morning i got to work and it was misty and then sunday will come around the day that i can get out and what happens nothing <laughs> absolutely f all happens it's gray it's overcast it's boring and it's dull and yeah it's really fucking annoying so but the cool side to that is, is that i've been able to teach myself or learn through watching and reading uh, different techniques on Photoshop or on Lightroom to, to almost create the conditions that I want. It's, not, it's, not, it's never going to be as good as actually getting those conditions, but you can have a bit of fun with it. I enjoy editing photos as much as I enjoy getting out, so you can play around and have a bit of fun with it. So, yeah, that's what it's creating. So if I turn that off, boring, no real depth to it, I'll turn it back on and now all of a sudden it looks like we had a misty day which we didn't but we don't have to tell people that they don't need to know that at all so yeah that's that bit I'm going to shut up now right the next thing I do is in what I like to call burning in the contrast so what I'll do is that is control shift E I think yes yeah, so if you press control shift alt and E together what it then it'll do what it will do then sorry is it creates a a new layer with all your effects applied and in that way when you edit that layer you're editing the effects you've applied i think something like that i just know it's a good thing to do <laughs> so yeah that's what i do with that right so the next thing i do is now i apply and then this one i use levels there are different ways in which i've done it but yeah levels so we go down come down the bottom here and this is whatever these are called. I can't remember what that option is. Sometimes it tells you. Oh, that's it. Create new filler adjustment layer. So click down there, click levels. Now, the first thing you want to do is you want to click this little button here. And what that does is it makes sure that that levels adjustment layer thing, the jig that you've just put in, is affecting the layer beneath it because you've clipped it down. Clip it off, clip it down. That's the first thing I do. And then the next thing is we go to our levels panel. And this is what I said in the uh, thing is basically like crunch it to buggery. So these these really push down your highs, your highlights somewhere around there. Go crazy with it and bring up your shadows, your darks, or however this works. Crunch them in. I'm not too sure if I'm getting the terminology right, but you can see what it's doing now. It's made that look absolutely mental. So, yeah, do that. Make it look absolutely mental because that's bringing contrast, interest, uh, vibrance. It's bringing it to life, basically, but we don't want it looks cack like over all of that, doesn't it? It looks fucking awful. So we don't want that all there. So this is where we use the layer mask that we've been provided. Now, this time, as I said a minute ago, I didn't do on the last layer mask I used, but on this layer mask, what I'm going to do is I'm going to invert this mask. So we're going to click control I, and that turns black and that inverts that mask as you can see it's now taken that off so if I go control I again it's on control again it's off 
And this time we're going to change, we're going to pick our brush, which I'm already on, and we're going to swip that, swip that, sw <laughs> swap that around, swip it. We're going to swap that around to its white. And that way now we're, we're painting that effect in to the, um, to the image. So I'll go to an even lower opacity this time. I can't remember. Yeah, burning contrast control. Yeah, there we go. It's the paint on the personal preference. So I think I'll come down somewhere around like 15, 16 with that. And then we just paint this effect in ever so slightly. Can you see the, the difference that's making already to that image? So just in the places where you want it. Like I wanted to liven up this moss. So that's what I'm doing. That needs to be smaller that brush as I say I'm going to be very rough with this and I really want to accentuate what I'm doing as well so that you can actually see it because I find sometimes like you watch editing <laughs> if you haven't guessed it by now I struggle to speak what I find sometimes uh, when you watch editing videos it's very subtle the effects and that's the to make it look a bit more professional, that's what you do is lots of subtle things and build them up uh, to when you edit a photo. And that way it looks a bit more natural. It looks just looks better. But the problem you get is when you do a video like I'm doing now like this, is that you, the viewer, or me when I'm watching these videos, you don't really see the effect that it's having. It's hard to tell. It's to, you know, when you're watching it on your TV or just on your phone, it's quite hard to tell the effect that that's actually having. So I'm going to be a bit extremer here just so you can actually see what's going on. But but yeah, basically we just brush that in. Keep brushing that in in the places that you want it. I really wanted to liven this moss up. And that is one of the big things with this. It's like dodging and burning basically, but just a different way of doing it. So yeah, so that's, I'll go with that for the minute. So if I turn that layer off, you can see it without it. If I turn it on, you're going to see the effect that it's had. So that's the probably the biggest one in this image, as well as the haze. Forgetting everything else, the basics and whatever. The haze and this con burning in the contrast doodah thing is what's bringing this image to life, I believe. So that's what, it, yeah, that's what I've done there, basically, with that. Oh, and I think that's it. <laughs> Sorry, uh, next time around I'll be a bit more uh, um, informative with this, I think. That was it. Huh. Do you know, I thought I'd done more to that. Well, yeah, there you go. Uh, <laughs> sorry, that's a bit of a rundown of how I edit that photo. I'm sure I've done a bit more to this. Look, two things I wanted to show you was the haze effect, which is sort of bringing the misty look to a woodland image, to a tree image or picture, piece of art, whatever you want to call it, and also this burning in the contrast, as I like to call it. So I've done that. Yeah, I've definitely achieved that. Sorry, I d yeah, I don't know why I'm apologising, but I hope you find that helpful because... <laughs> I thought I'd, yeah, I prepared myself for like half an hour and, and that hasn't happened. But yeah, I hope that's helpful. Yeah. Bye bye. See you later, guys. Have a nice day, or evening, or morning. <laughs>